Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield, your trusted source for analysis. My name's Sterling. I'm your host. There's another liberal scandal brewing that involves the new de facto finance minister, Mark Carney. Apparently, many of his companies have already benefited billions of dollars in the short time that he's been at the uh, reins of the job. Since Mark Carney has taken over as the de facto finance minister, his companies and his friends have benefited to the tune of nearly 13 billion Canadian taxpayers' dollars. I say it again, 13 billion. And of course, the Liberal Party being confronted by it is talking all kinds of foolishness, saying things that don't make any sense at all. I mean, the connection that they are hoping you would, the logic leap that you and I are hope that they're hoping you and I are making is just, I mean, it is beyond the stretch. Like, there's just no way you can put the, the math together. But let's have a listen to them nonetheless, and then I'll, I'll break it down for you. Federal government taxes are up, costs are up, crime's up, and time's up for this prime minister and his de facto finance minister, Carbon Tax. Carney, since taking on the role, the friends and business interests of Carbon Tax, Carney have benefited with billions of tax dollars, $2 billion for his buddy at Telesat and Brookfield getting a seat at the table to get their hands on $10 billion Canadian tax dollars. Suddenly, Carbon Tax, Carney is raising funds for these Liberals in exchange for all of those billions. So will they cooperate with an investigation from Canada's lobbying commissioner? Madam Speaker, the Death Valley well driller is poking more dry holes. <laughs> Outstanding Canadians stepping up to advise the Liberal Party or any party is a very good thing. But what this member wants to cloud is the fact that, Madam Speaker, inflation's down, yeah. interest rates are down, <laughs> wage settlements are up, hey. the economy is up. We've reached a soft landing in this country. They should stop talking the country down. We're going to continue lifting the country up, Madam Speaker. Death Valley well driller? This is a member of parliament. There are people in the world. Think about the fact that this, just, just resonate this in your mind. There are people in this country that took their right to vote, gave their 100% endorsement with that vote to this guy. To a man who stands up in the House of Commons and says, oh, the Death Valley well driller is poking dry holes. I mean, I'm sure in his mind it was a really wicked burn or something like that. But to me, and you, does that make any sense to you? I mean, I, I understand the connotation of the Death Valley and I understand dr uh, drilling a dry well. I don't understand how that applied to the things that MP Barrett had just asked him. Did, like, is that just me? Am I the only one who's not seeing that? Now, I'm going to leave alone the, the you know, soft landing crack because he says it again. And then I'll, the shock of that is just taking me a minute to, to sink in. Unbelievable soft landing. All Canadians, I wish that every time we looked for a scandal, it wasn't just surface deep, like the public safety minister found guilty of breaking the law. The prime minister broke the law. The trade minister broke the law. These guys can't help themselves. And now he wants to tell us that Canadians have never had it so good. And that's why they have carbon tax Carney, who's lining the pockets of his friends and himself, all so that he'll raise a little cash for a dying liberal party. Canadians have had absolutely enough after nine years of their corruption and grift. So why won't the prime minister subject his new de facto finance minister to the conflict of interest regime is he worried that he's going to be found guilty of breaking the law too <laughs> madam speaker the predictions of impending doom coming from that member in particular and his political party really sound discordant to canadians what is happening across this country madam speaker is that after the pandemic we've achieved that rare feat a soft landing no recession oh wage God. gains inflation coming down interest rates coming down He ran out of time. He was talking so long. And the fact that he ran out of time should show you the desperation that he's trying to impart. Right? He's really hoping that these sound bites will make an impact on the fact that food is through the roof. He's really hoping that it'll make an impact on it. Now, I can talk about the, the incredible gaslighting that he put through that in those two statements, you know, to say that interest is up. I'm going to do an entire video on the on how interest uh, on inflation, excuse me, on how it works and how they measure it, which is really important. Now, Canada has lost money; had their economy has shrunk 
uh, what is it? Seven out of the last eight times. And now we're coming up on eight out of the last nine quarters. And he says to himself that there was no recession. That's only because they tried to change the words, the wording of the word, like the, the definition of the word recession. But I promise you that if you tell somebody that Mark Carney's companies lost money eight of the last time at nine months, they would fire him in a heartbeat. They would remove him in a second. They would remove any CEO, any financial officer that was making those kinds of losses because that means nobody put any money in their pocket. None of the people that gave them their money to chase, to, to use, because that's what they do, right? They take the money that... So a pension fund, for example, $10 billion has been dumped into that with off different paychecks over the years. And then that guy who's waiting for his pension, his return, when he retires and all the other person, whatever it may be, that's because a guy like Mark Carney has taken that money and invested it in different places. That's how they gain, that's how they uh, accumulate such power because they put money in 15 or 20 or a hundred different companies, or they put money in companies that own other companies. And I don't want to bore you with it in this particular video because I'm still a little bit wanting to cover the soft landing crack. Does anybody feel like they're doing better? Does anybody feel like they, that you landed softly or do you feel more like the wicked witch of the East there who got the whole house landed right on top of her? I mean, food is the highest it's ever been in the history of Canada. Housing is the highest it's ever been in the history of Canada. Nobody has any place to live. Gas is through the roof. Everything is high, expensive, expensive, expensive. And he's telling you that it was a soft landing. I guess in, in one respect, it wasn't a hard landing. The economy didn't collapse like in the 1930s of, of the United States of America, like when the, when the global uh, economy went into a depression. But there's no way in the world that it was a soft landing. We're still recovering. The fact that he's trying to tell himself that interest rates are down and... Um, it's come down, what, a couple of points over the, it went up how many points over the course of two years? And then he says pandemic, because he's still, they're desperately clinging on to the past. It's always somebody else's fault with these guys. The shock that he would stand up and think that he's being, that you're going to say to themselves, yay, I'm living a great life because MP McKinnon says that it was a soft landing. I mean, put that in your mind. Somebody voted for this guy, and he stood up and in all seriousness tried to convince you that the economy of this country isn't bad. But as I wrap, I just want you to wrap, I just want you to think about this for a second. If everything that he's, let's just put aside all of the falsities of what he said. If everything that he says is true, if every word that he coming out of his mouth is 100% fact, that, you know, for some reason the country is, you know, back on track and all the things that he wants you to believe, then why do they need Mark Kearney? Can anybody explain that to me? If everything is going tickety-boo and everything is just, it's, it's, it's better than it's ever been and, and anybody who doesn't agree with the liberals, of course, we're back to this now, right? Anybody who doesn't agree with the liberals hates Canada, right? I mean, it's just ridiculous. But let's just say, let's just give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay, if, the, if all of that's true, then why does Mark Kearney have this job? Why is Mark Kearney put in a position where he can give $2 billion loan to one of his friends, take a $10 billion pension fund from Canadians to handle? And why are the liberals so terrified to put him in through the scu scrutiny of lobbying or through um, conflict of interest? A, comp a, a political party that just came through the Green Slush Fund that is just being beat up by the Green Slush Fund that we talked about 183 conflict of interest in just 18 people is hiding yet another conflict of interest? Does that sound like the Canada that you want to live in? I mean... Whether you were born here or whether you just got here, do you want to live under a government that takes your money, mismanages it, and then tells you if you complain about it, they're going to censor you? Because that's the government that you have currently running the show. They don't make any sense. Nothing connects. The, do not, the dots don't connect. And if you try to say anything, they don't say to themselves, okay, wait a minute, we're figuring it out. They just try and throw shade on you, throw it back on you. I don't know. That seems to me there's a lot there that doesn't connect. You know, there's a lot there that doesn't add up. And, I, you know, I guess if it doesn't add up, why do we believe it in, in any way, shape, or form? And more importantly, if, if I figured out it doesn't add up and you understand it doesn't add up, how come this guy doesn't realize that we know that it doesn't add up? He's either not too swift and doesn't understand that it doesn't add up and therefore shouldn't be running the country, or he knows that he's being dishonest and therefore shouldn't be running the country. Either which way, in my opinion, this is not the kind of people that are going to get us out of the problems that they have dropped us into.
Okay. So that's my opinion. And I get a little fired up when I hear them getting all, trying to be all foolish and throwing soft landing. Unbelievable. <sighs> Nobody told the rest of us there, MP McKinnon. Apparently you're the only one who got that memo. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.